All right, so let's walk through this multi-agent blueprint architecture. I have checked out the repository and opened it in my cursor IDE. And what you can see is the architecture that is deployed when you deploy it via AWS CDK. And that is basically a couple of bedrock agents. We are having one supervisor agent who is in charge of distributing tasks to multiple sub-agents. And in this demo example, we are having one RAG agent that has access to a knowledge base via a retrieval augmented generation. And this agent is able to connect to an RDS vector database where embeddings of PDFs are stored. So as soon as you upload some data to S3, it will generate embeddings and those embeddings will then store into the vector database. And the RAG agent can then work with this data here. The second agent is the tools agent and this agent is able to call Lambda action group. And the Lambda action group is um, then in turn responsible for communicating with an external API. We also have tracing implemented, so we can um, track the costs, we can do evaluations, and we can also uh, debug um, user prompts in production. The application itself consists, consists of authentication and uh, an application the, um, service that is deployed to um, AWS ECS. So let's look into the specific components. So first let's start with the infrastructure as code so when you follow the readme and you cdk deploy what is happening under the hood is that those four stacks are deployed so the simple stack is the authentication it's just generating a user pool where you can use um, username password authentication to securely access the app and you can just create those users in the AWS console after um, the stack is deployed. The second is um, the vector stack. It depends on the generative AI CDK constructs that is published by CDK Labs. And it uses this Amazon Aurora vector store. And this vector store here, we're using the most simplest configuration that it already creates an RDS database. And under the hood, it installs PG vector with a custom resource so that then you can use this vector store um, as a knowledge base for your data. And that also needs a small VPC, just an isolated subnet to be deployed into. The third stack is the bedrock stack. So this stack um, creates a bucket where we deploy our um, protocols into. The protocols are here in the data folder at the moment we only have one protocol and that's just a medical protocol with 135 pages so there's a lot in it and the reg agent has the responsibility to uh, find out which portions of this pdf um, are required from the prompt that the user is giving so here um, this knowledge base gets created and in this case we are using the titan embeddings from aws we could also use um, AWM cohere embeddings from um, the external foundation model um, we are having a length of 512 here that's usually sufficient and reduces costs um, we are defining the source so this is basically the pairing between the knowledge base and the reg bucket. So we are saying this bucket gets linked to this knowledge base and also we use a parsing model to um, parse the PDFs. In this case, we are using Claude 3.5 Sonnet version one. And we also define a chunking strategy. In that case, we are using a hierarchical chunking um, with default values for Titan, but there can also be semantic chunking or custom chunking definition. We are deploying a Lambda function so that whenever a PDF gets uploaded to this bucket, it will automatically trigger a refresh of the knowledge base so that we don't have to do that manually. And this function is defined here uh, in the data sync 
um, TypeScript. So it just calls the um, Bedrock Agent API and it starts an ingestion job with the knowledge base ID in the data source ID. So that's done for us. And then we have um, this deployment where CDK is automatically uploading the PDF files for us from this folder. Um, so that's the rag part. And now we are talking about the tools function. So for the tools, as I already said, it's deployed to AWS Lambda. So we're having some code that is um, here in this repository and it's deployed as a Lambda function. And then we create um, an action group for Bedrock out of this Lambda function. Um, the action group next to the code always needs to have an open API schema. So the agent knows what actions it can do and what parameters it's uh, feeding to the function and what results is it expecting. So here we can um, link that JSON schema and we will see later how it's generated. Um, there is also a role that's allowing the agent to do stuff um, and we are overriding some of the prompts. So there is a prompt folder here um, and you see that some of the prompts, default prompts are overridden. So for example, here in that case, the clinical trial agent, um, which is the protocol agent, it has certain instructions. So here it says, okay, you're specialized in medical protocols. Um, and there's some addition. So if a table is present, always use concrete values. Um, and here's for example, the definition for the knowledge base and for the orchestration. So those are the things that we needed to modify because the default values were not good enough. You can always provide your own custom instructions. Um, the knowledge base um, also has instructions and then we define the protocol agent. We use Cloud 3.5 Sonnet version one and we override the prompts and we link it to the knowledge base and we link it um, to the um, user input instructions like that, which are indeed then read from the file here. And so there is also the supervisor and the supervisor we need to create via custom resources because at the moment CloudFormation does not support the creation of agent collaborations. So. Here we need to use the um, AWS SDK and we are calling it with on create, on update, and on delete definitions. And then we are working with this agent ID for the supervisor and we are giving it code interpreter capabilities. So the uh, um, supervisor is then able to execute code on our behalf. And also we are associating to two sub agents to it. So one is the trial agent that gets associated also over a custom resource. And the second one is the protocol agent that gets also associated with this bedrock associate agent command from the um, AWS SDK because there is no cloud formation support for it yet. And so AWS CDK can also not directly provision it. Then we are preparing the supervisor agent, which is always necessary before you can actually use it. Um, also over a custom resource. And then we are creating an alias, which is like a reference to this deployed, deployed version of the agent that we can then use to invoke the agent. So there's a lot happening here in, in the Bedrock class. That's one of the magic sources um, that is defined in this blueprint and you can add your um, other tools and your other knowledge bases and everything you need to have um, in, in this file as well. So, so much for the infrastructure. Let's look into the source code. First, let's look into the tools that we define. And as I said, here is this open API schema that is defined for us. And we can look what functions are defined here. And those are then the functions that the agent can use. So it looks in the schema and understands, okay, um, those parameters are available and I'm expecting those responses. And so we are having a function to search trials from clinicaltrials.gov. 
to get trial details for a specific trial, find the closest trial based on a specific um, country and uh, zip code and city and getting inclusion and exclusion criteria. So those are just samples for you to understand how this functionality could be adapted towards your own use case. And what you can see here is that we are using AWS Lambda Power Tools and it will allow us to generate this open API schema automatically. So here in the main, there is only get open API JSON schema. And whenever something has changed here, you just need to run it as a debug configuration and then it will refresh the schema JSON for you. In order to do that, you need to annotate your function. So you need to um, specify the types for the parameters and you need to describe it. And um, the same goes to the responses. So in this case, we are returning a list of minimal clinical trials, which is um, defined here in the, um, in the models. And we're using Pydantic and typing libraries to define all those schemas. And then the um, Open API generator knows how to generate the schema JSON for us. Um, that's mainly it. You can look into the details of how this is implemented, but it's not super important for the moment. And uh, lastly, we are looking at the Streamlit app, the main app, and this is just a Docker container that's deployed to AWS um, ECS. And we can also check out the stack, um, the app stack. So it's just basically um, a um, Fargate service that is deployed to ECS via this um, CDK construct, it's application load balanced Fargate service. And um, you can modify it to use your own domain, your own certificates, whatever you want to um, utilize in your application. And this um, Streamlit application um, is defined mainly in the app.py and the agent components are um, defined in the subfolder. So here we are constructing the visual interface for the user to interact with. And then in the agent class, we are actually communicating with the um, Boto3 um, SDK. And this will allow us to talk to the agent. So here we are um, yeah, talking to the agent and um, sending the prompts. And then we are also looking into the responses and a lot of this um, real-time trace output that you see in the demo is defined here in the handlers where we are actually looking into the different types of traces that we receive. And from these traces, we are then displaying them with Streamlit. So Streamlit is a very convenient way if you're not a front-end developer just to develop um, everything in Python that you're used to and to have something up and running that you can show to the user. So if I would like to run the Streamlit now locally, I can just execute this run command and um, open it in my browser. And then I'm seeing the cool application and I can just um, ask the application some questions, the agent some questions. And um, for example, here this tools example, um, I will just um, fire it up and it will invoke the agent, the supervisor agent, it will give me the traces back from the bedrock SDK call and render them here in real time for me. And what is also happening behind the scenes is that we are sending this information to Langviews. So you added your Langviews API key and that allows you to um, collect all the information that the user is seeing on the front and also on the back end. So now, for example, for this input query, we are saving the output. We are doing a calculation of the costs based on the token usage for Claude. And we are also um, saving all these sub events here, like single model invocations, reasoning steps as metadata. So whenever um, a user would rate this example as not 
very good, which is possible here um, with the thumbs up, thumbs down. You can also add a text if you want um, in the future. Then this feedback will be attached to the trace. And for example, here I was giving a positive feedback. And in this way, you would be able to identify prompts that led to an incorrect answer. And you will be able to debug where it went wrong and improve your orchestration and improve your instructions to better handle the failing scenarios. And you can always add those um, traces to a data set. So for end-to-end -end testing, this would be convenient. And then you can always test your latest agent deployment against those labeled data sets. But that's a topic for another session. Evaluation is very complex, and this blueprint is, blueprint is just the starting point to get you up and running.